Now we're talking about the year of return. We're celebrating 400 years of the first enslaved uh, African arriving in Jamestown, Virginia. And we have here Reverend Dr. Alexander G, who is the president and founder of the Nehemiah Center for Urban Leadership Development. Thanks for joining us. It's Dr. my pleasure to be here. Uh, let's start the conversation off uh, like this. What does the year of return uh, mean for you and also other African Americans? Well, I'm here with a group with the NAACP mm -hmm. um, from Washington, D.C., but we represent African Americans from all across the United States. Right. It means a sense of, of coming home and understanding our beginning and our roots. Mm. I've been to Africa a few times, to South Africa, but there's something very meaningful about coming to West Africa. I studied African American studies in my as an undergraduate, and so I've always had images in my head of going back home um, and to connecting with my African roots. But being here is very empowering. Right. We've gone to several events where people have said to us repeatedly, welcome home, mm. you're in Africa now, enjoy it. And it feels like being a part of a family reunion and meeting relatives I didn't know that I had. And mm. it actually invoked mm. some emotions because I didn't realize how isolated I feel as an African American in the United States. Mm -hmm. Although that's my home, right. I didn't realize what I've been missing but not being in the motherland and being with people who are connected with me culturally. So, so far, how has the experience uh, been for you, the year of return and all of the things you've had to experience here? Well, it's been very powerful. Mm. It started off with um, a tour in Virginia of right. Jamestown. So right. we went to Texas to see where the first Africans arrived. But we were met with, with a drumming ceremony at the airport, which mm. is very powerful. Um, but the repeated statement of, of, of welcome home, welcome home, because the, the perception that many of us as black Americans have is that we are not fully at home in America, nor are we mm -hmm. fully at home in mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. And so to have people meet us at the airport, at the hotels, at festivals, and to look me in my eye and say, welcome home, right. was, very, was very stirring. And I, I'm, we have a WhatsApp mm -hmm. chat, and people are talking about what it means to see themselves reflected in TV anchors or right. in advertisement. These are things that I don't readily see daily in Wisconsin, mm. where blacks are about 5% of the state population. So it feels very therapeutic, and um, but it does feel like a welcome home. It doesn't feel like I'm a tourist. Mm. Um, it does feel, it, on a very um, soulish level, it feels right. like it's really connecting. Right. And let's move a, a bit away from that and, and talk about the way uh, that uh, African Americans are treated in the United States because in the past and even currently we've heard uh, some stories here and there, shootings and people not being treated fairly. People cannot as much as go to the stores to go and buy stuff because of the way they might be treated. You think that, you know, African Americans themselves have contributed to the way they are treated you know, in the United States? I think they've contributed but I think it's very important to look at, at at the um, at the origins of it right. for so long I moved from Chicago which mm. where my where as a first grader my class was predominantly black and I had a black teacher and she told me I could be whatever I wanted mm. when I moved to Madison that is predominantly white the first thing I was told about African-American people was that we were slaves right not that we built civilizations not that we were brilliant not that we were mathematicians that we were slaves mm. and that kind white people freed us and so yes African-Americans have contributed with some of a crime but I also know that when you hold people under, when you oppress people, and you give, you feed them negative images about themselves, right. they begin to live that out and act that out. Mm. Part of my work at Nehemiah is to turn that around and to talk not only about our heritage of, of colonialism or mm -hmm. heritage of slavery, mm -hmm. but, our, but our heritage of resilience. Right. And I think that that's what I'm learning about as I'm here as well. I know this as a, as a student, as a scholar, mm. but to see people who have practiced resilience, who have built black civilizations, black businesses, black banks, that's foreign mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. me. And I think mm -hmm. if more African Americans had images of right. what you see every day in Ghana, right. we would live differently in the United States. So part of what I want to do as my commitment to the year of return mm. is to find out how to bring more African Americans here and to find out how do we join our resources with people in Ghana right. to make a more bold economic statement mm. in the world. Now, one of the things that uh, most people also think is that uh, with the changing governments, like uh, the Obama administration has had its fair share of the way blacks were treated, uh, as well as the Trump administration. But how different do you think it's been, the transition? Do you think blacks were treated uh, you know, fair when Obama was in government or the other way around because Trump is uh, president now? 
What do you make of that statement? No, blacks are not treated any differently. Right. I think it's the same. It's, it's the same. It's gotten worse. It's, well, it's gotten worse because we thought two things would happen when mm. President Obama was elected. Mm. Either he'd be assassinated, and we prayed that that would not be the right. case, or that there would be such a critical backlash of Americans who have said, now we have brown people in the White House, mm -hmm. a black wife, black children, a black mother-in-law. Right. We've lost our country. And so I don't think that Donald Trump has created anything new except um, new avenues like Twitter to, to convey his ignorance. Right. But I think he's, he's un he gives voice to what America has been saying for 400 years. Mm -hmm. And so while America looked in, and said, we've now elected a black president, everything is fixed. Black Americans kept saying, no, we don't own banks. Right. And we, we, we are not um, properly represented in government, which is, which is our responsibility because we need to get to the polls and to, to, to elect our black leaders, but we still don't hold the purse strings or make the huge economic decisions. And so what's happened is it's frightened America. They feel like we've taken care of everything. You've had a black president. Now it's the time for white leaders mm. and people are trying to take America back. That's what I hear when I hear make America great again. I hear let's take it back to the good old days mm. when foreigners and black people and native people um, weren't trying to be equal with us. Right, right. Um, but it, it, the change starts with us, I believe. Yes. I, I want to find out what you are doing um, to uh, ensure inclusiveness and then the general well-being of African Americans. Sure. Mm. Our work is, is twofold. One is to build capacity in African Americans by asking what do you need to be successful? Because traditional social services says, you're broken, let me fix you. Right. Let me help you with your children, let me help you with your food, let me help you. We rarely ask people, what do you need? What do you want to mm. make you successful? So I, that's part of what we do. We ask people, what do you need? But then on the, other, on the other side of the equation, I'm talking with white allies, and I'm saying these systemic realities are true. Some of the ideals that made slavery possible 400 years ago still exist, but in a different form. Right. It looked like Reconstruction, Deconstruction, Jim Crow, separate but equal. And so what are you going to do as lawyers, as judges, as doctors, as school teachers to dismantle these issues? Mm, and so mm. my, my approach is let's talk to white um, people in power, mm -hmm. ask them about their spheres of influence. What can you do to dismantle what you know whites have built right. against African Americans, but then also empower African Americans to say, let's stop complaining. Let's stop talking that we don't know our history. Let's tell our own children our history. Let's do it the way our ancestors did. Let's look at bringing our resources together, our intelligence together, mm. and let's do what black people have done since the beginning of time. We've, right. built, we've built civilizations and we've changed the world. And so I want to use history as a way of directing us in the future. So my approach is to strengthen African Americans by setting their own destiny. Mm -hmm. But I also want to pair that with with whites who need to understand there are systems that are impeding black success. Mm. Help us to dismantle that so that the African Americans that we're empowering have a greater ladder of success. Now in wrapping up, Doc, um, after the year of return, how do you think the way forward looks for us as a people? I think we need to have more conversations about how we work together. Mm -hmm. African Americans, if we combine our economics, would be about the eighth largest nation in the world. But if we combine that with Africans and blacks in the Caribbean, mm. we might be third or fourth. So I think the discussion needs to be, how do we as African Americans invest in Ghana, invest in West Africa, mm. and mm. not other parts of the world where we visit, where we vacation, and where we buy property? So I want to bring groups of African Americans from the U.S. to mm -hmm. Ghana to begin to think about how do we invest in businesses? How do we buy property here? How do we vacation here? I've never thought of vacationing in Ghana mm. until I came here a few days ago with my wife and my daughter and my sister. And now I'm asking myself questions like, can I have dual citizenship? Can right. I buy property right. here? I want to be part of this pan-African movement. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of this world change. So I think the dialogue needs to continue, and we need more reciprocity. But I want to personally mm -hmm. bring more African Americans to Ghana and West Africa to see what can be done and what is possible. Right, Doc. It's been amazing having you on the it's show the pleasure's this been morning. Mine. Reverend Dr. Alexander G. is the president and founder of Nehemiah Center for Urban Leadership and Development. We've been talking about the year of return, and he seems really poised, really ready to make a change.